everybody. Welcome in. Today we're going to do a super fun Produce Loops performance of a song called Summer Sound by a band called Self. After which I'm going to break down exactly how we made it on a stream in Ableton, all the loops and uh, how it's controlled, how we EQ'd it, how the mix works, and how you can do these things too to make your big mixes sound great, fast, as good as they can, right? Let's rock some stuff. Take a long vacation Only to a place you've seen in your imagination A place where time stands still as the earth Racing beneath the stars summer sound whoo that was fun I love that song that was a nice little whoo I'm now I'm a whoo boy whoo boy okay so let's talk about summer sound how this came to be so the track itself I should say is a bit cooler you know than what I just did um, that's my that's me pretending or uh, you know, covering Matt Mahaffey, who's a phenomenal composer and musician. Get a little drink of water. If you don't know who he is, look him up. It's fantastic. His band is called Self. That song was released under that label, or under that, that moniker, that band. But anyways, uh, let's talk about what... So that's just a straight rocker. We made that in Ableton, made it live on stream... Um, and so basically, I'll show you where it started. I think if I do... Oh, no, I changed all that. What I was just doing... Let's pop over to Raven View. What I was just doing was kind of looking at... Or I was hitting these pads right here. You can see this big pad guy right in your face. And I was popping these pads. I sometimes... You can see the stop button's all just lit up. Um, my bottom right's almost always on that stop, and so that's a stop all clips, and then one of the other ones will, you know, go on to, we'll see where it's set up. Let me turn on Control M. It's not. So if I hit that and learn it to that button, now you see this happens. Volume. 
And so that little that little combination of actions, that stop all and that button is learned to this stop button on the master channel. But that little uh, stop all clips and then trigger just one clip is a lot of times it's a great way to just like get a song going without having to have an extra scene or a bunch of shit in there. Um, this one, we don't do it that way. Uh, there's a filter sweep kind of move that brings in the uh, the initial jam. So uh, with the drums. So um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but so what what are we looking at? What are we doing here? This is a pretty basic Ableton project for me. It looks like there's a lot going on because there's like 50 plus loops kind of like laid out in front of you. But uh, it's really only like, I don't know, between like 10 and 15 loops, you know, actually like all like different individual loops. Because you see a lot of stuff is duplicated. Look over to the right and you'll see how my scenes are labeled. So generally each scene, you know, is a part of the song. So in this case we have, um, well, before I get to that, how we done it, uh, well, I'll tell you about the instruments. Um, so what's in this song? We've got acoustic drums, which are like, oh, that's not the right. Turn this up. noise, isn't that fun? So there's drums that I can't play well this morning. And um, acoustic drums, um, there's, oh yeah, there's, that's all there is, this other, usually sometimes I have electronic drums and acoustic drums, a lot of times mixed together. This one's just straight drums, but uh, it's, there's two of them, two tracks, because uh, this first one just has this filter sweep thing going on which I don't know why I did two tracks. So I just, I do things because uh, I can sometimes. This computer is really powerful. It's a, an iMac i9. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of lets me do anything. 3.6 i9. So it's fun and I do. I'll probably freeze those before I get to performing them, but hell, I just did and it was not a problem. So I don't know, maybe not. Then we have bass guitar. We have uh, three electric guitars. Uh, this one's kind of a, again, it's affected differently uh, than the normal mids track just for those two sections. So these two tracks, these two are kind of identical guitar sounds, but they're just affected differently. What amps are we using? The first one is a Randall T2. So this is, uh, this one combined, this is probably a Mesa. Yep, this is the Mesa model. So those two combined uh, generally produce a great, a great, well, I, I, you'll, you'll see, we'll turn it on right here in a minute, but we'll pan them hard left and hard right. And those guys really, that together, they create a great, a great, just full, thick guitar sound. Then I'll put one lower gain guitar, which is that next channel, put that right in the middle. And you'll see when they're mixed, together it just makes uh, a big huge guitar sound and so the other thing that's kind of important put important in there is we've got yes one two three different amplifiers and one two three different guitars right and so all those using all that variability is what adds like flavor and color to the thing which you may not initially like readily consciously notice but you do subconsciously and the whole thing um, is just, it sounds better. I've done it both ways. You can, you know, you can if you have to. I mean, there's ways to do that on the cheap. What if you don't have all these guitars and amp models, dude? It's like, well, get really good with your EQs and effects and things and learn how to make your stuff sound different from each other because those differences are what's going to make it all blend well. So let's. So Saudi. Let's look at these uh, guitar tracks together. So uh, individually, this one's not even panned right. Oh, let's go back over here. Arrival. So these individually, let's even do that. That's the Randall. Put it in the now a little bit. See. That's the Randall. This is the Mesa. Very similar tone. The Randall, I think. The Randall, I think, is a bit more MIDI, 
but those are the two individual tones. And together. Ah, uh, yeah. It's just stereo goodness all, all through. So the other one, the third one, is this guitar. She's, you can tell it's much lower gain. It's a much weaker thing, but it's definitely more notes too. You want to play the full chords on this mid-range guitar. And when you put it in the mix, and you're like, but wait, where is it? Well, take it out. It was pretty low right there. Um, even and for the performance, which is bad. Like, what are you gonna do? But that often happens when I do stuff on stream, which was kind of the last place this was messed with, I think. Um, you mess with stuff and then you save and you leave your project and you come back to it and you're like, shit. You should always check your stuff out first before you perform it. I don't always do it. But, see what I mean with that guitar? Now let's take it out, the mid guitar. And you're like, ah, oh, it's not the same. It just puts what, right what you need in the middle. And so now watch what happens when we add the bass. It's like everything will get fat. The bass isn't even particularly loud. I turned it down yesterday on purpose. But that's probably good right there, you know? And so you've got a nice, big, fat, heavy guitar sound, which is what we're looking for right here in this one, um, so that we can really carry those choruses and really make them bang. And so that's the guitars. Let's go ahead and turn all these solos back off. Next uh, in line, uh, we can hear this very first, the guitar from the start. So there's like a little wah-wah thing going on there. And just some different EQ. Um, and if we talk a little bit about I said I'd talk about the EQ on some of this stuff. Um, this one is a standout for sure. The uh, All my mid-gain channels, you'll notice, go through uh, a Neve model console. Preamp and console EQ. And uh, that's because the mids in the Neve models are so, like, they're just good. They're very, very spot on, like, very poignant mids. I love the mids. And so you can see, I really just have a slight boost in both. And on this one, uh, which is not the norm for me, I did boost the little highs to some of the top stuff. Um, it might not be that way on this one. Let's have a look. Nope. See, this is the normal mid gain channel that runs with those heavy guitars. You'll notice that one is not boosted on the top. So, uh, and usually, so we've got then a low shelf that's that should be around a hundred. We don't want anything coming through on the bottom from this guitar. It's not necessary. It's just going to muddle up frequencies. And uh, like I kind of mentioned briefly in the introduction. That's one of the things, you know, that you can do really fast is is keep things out of the low end. You know, most EQ plugins, and um, this is Slate Digital stuff that we're using, which I recommend if you don't know what's up with plugins or have a plugin line that you're totally into, um, get on the subscription. You get everything they make for not that much money per year, as much money as you pay for plug a plugin or two, like for sure. But so... Um, you always, on uh, almost all EQs, man, uh, you'll find, uh, dude, you'll find uh, a low a low cutoff there. So we set ours so that nothing underneath 99 hertz goes through from this guitar. You don't need it in the mix. It's just going to mighty things up. The only things you really need down low are, you know, the kick drum, the bass guitar, sometimes a little bit of a synth, you know, this or that, and... Uh, you know, maybe a little bit from here and there from other things. Let's take a look at what's on these other... I was going to say the heavy guitars shouldn't probably have anything, and they don't. They just have uh, a nice compressor, the two-way. 
um, and that's set to one. So it's just like, you know, giving a little bit of gain and a little bit of peak reduction and kind of smoothing things out. It makes a real, uh, it just, man, that, that compressor makes things sound better. The right compressor, if you're not familiar with compressor, like the right compressors for the right instrument and track or whatever can make such an awesome difference. Um, they can provide a you know, color. I mean, you generally think compressor, it's going to, you know, even out your sound and that's what a compressor does. It's like, well, unless it's a really good compressor, like all the really good ones, they will do that, but they're, they generally add a character to the sound. And then the compressors are known for, you know, like the, the character, um, the distressor, you know, the LA-2A, there's different compressors that have different sounds in their, their, it's really fun. It's cool. It's cool stuff. But so uh, that's that stuff in the vocals. What are we doing in the vocals? Um, I didn't vary up the mics yet, so we could probably do that right now. Um, generally, I use Slate VMS. Slate again. I am a Slate child. I like I like the Slate stuff. What can I say? That one's not even has the console model turned on. We're using uh, the Trident ADB console model, which is one of my favorites. And so this right here, we've got the 269. That's the Neumann 69, I think. And uh, we'll change that up. That's gonna that's my lead vocal mic. And so what we'll do is change those up. So this one, put a 47 on. That's more gritty. Um, there's more of a mid boost in there. And so that's for, there's two double vocals, doubled vocals. A harmony is doubled. So let's let's do that on one of those. And then uh, this third vocal, which is a harmony, let's do that on an 800M, which is a Sony 800 model, but it's darker because uh, Slate made it that way on purpose. They have an 800 non-M model too on the top of this rack. But so let's try those out real quick. Let me solo up some vocals and see how that sounds. Hello sunshine, we're waking up. People gather around for the summer sound. Farewell moonlight, we've had enough. Watch your sorrow drown. Hello, sunshine. We're oh, waking like, Where's that reverb coming people from? People gather around for the summer sun. Extra effects left on the channel Fair from my live vocal light. channel. Where this channel was duplicated from. Drown. So we'll put a touch of reverb on there. Hello, sunshine. We're waking up. People gather around. But so you can hear the. It almost sounds like it's sound. clipping sometimes. This mic. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. Watch your sorrows drown. And it's hot. Hello, sunshine. We're waking up. People gather around. But keep in mind, all of this stuff is designed to be driven. Farewell Don't really want it to like pop red. We've had enough. Watch your sorrows drown. But like that's the idea. We even have a drive control where we drive it harder. Hello, sunshine. So We're here's the difference in these mics. Listen. People gather around for that's the a 47. Sound. Here's the 800. Farewell, moonlight. You can tell it's immediately high and crisp, Watch poppy. Your sorrows drown. 251. Hello, sunshine. Again, We're waking thing. up. People gather around for the sun. 269 sound. is like kind of in the middle for Farewell, all that for my voice. Light. We've had but so for enough. this one, Watch your sorrows drown. You hear that now? We go right into that MIDI 47. Hello, sunshine. Sounds gritty. It sounds MIDI. We're going to drive this preamp too. Gather round for the until we start sound. to see that. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. So these little Watch bits of drive drown. will give it color. Hello, sunshine. We're waking up. And so you can tell the one on the right is clean. It's clean and it's coarsey even. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. And Watch your The third one in the middle is the harmony. What are we doing? Hello, sunshine. We're waking up. People it's the clearest. 
before the summer sun. Notice the low shelf. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. Because watch your sorrows. These drown. vocals again don't need to be coming through like in the mix. We can shelf them higher. Than Hello, that. sunshine. We're waking up. There's not People a lot of information down there anyway, so it doesn't really the matter. Summer sound. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. Watch your sorrows drown in the summer sound. Hello, sunshine. We're waking up. People gather round for the summer sound. Farewell, moonlight. We've had enough. Watch your sorrows drown in the summer sound. Um, so the only other thing that I hadn't really talked about that I'd <coughs> do on the vocals there is that I have this, uh, where's the vocal track? My live vocal track has two things on it, this delay and this chorus, both of which when I press this button on my foot, they turn on. And so I do that a lot of times on choruses or different things for effect. You heard this song, it worked good on, uh, some of the uh, verse lyrics, you know, involving imagination and aliens and shit like that. So uh, it lends itself to extra effects. And of course, we've got a knob here to turn on some reverb if we, we need some reverb. So the only other thing in here, we do have a little bit of strings in the opening jam. In this section, oh, I'm soloed up, sorry. I'm soloed up. Those are mislabeled cellos. Those come to us courtesy of the Spitfire BBC uh, Symphony Orchestra plugin. I like, their, I like their spiccato cellos. And then lastly, we have a little keyboard sound, which is probably the more one of the more complicated things in the project. But let's turn some things off, right? So this is just uh, the virtual channel and a low shelf and really a boost, some EQ boost in the, in the lows for sure. Um, so if, let's turn all this stuff off. This is a wah pedal and a phaser. This is a resonator and a reverser. So our patch is from Anna 2. Crispy Bells. And I just played something in similar to an arpeggiator, arpeggiated kind of a thing. And uh, with things back on, our reverser gives us a little bit of just taste. Kind of messes up some of the notes a little bit. Resonator. These are kilobits, kil uh, pl kilohertz plugins. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, kilohertz. And a resonator that just kind of makes things uh, echo out a little bit, this and that. Um, the wah pedal totally shapes the tone, reshapes the tone. Phaser spreads it just a hair. And then we just boost a little of the mids and low mids with EQ. Put it through a thing, and boom. The bass looks like this. This looks like it was started from one of the slate presets, which is uh, too fine. There's two compressors. One of them's fat, though, so that kind of makes for an interesting thing, but it's turned off anyways. You just delete it. Revival is a cool little, like a BBB, BBE sonic maximizer kind of a thing. Dun, dun, dun. 
and drums shouldn't probably have much anything done to them. Yeah, not at all. Just going through the console and the compressor. There's some reverb on that one specific to that. No, it's not. It's just a fucking reverb. It's just a reverb. Okay, so uh, that's all the stuff that's in the project. Um, so I chose to do, in the actual song, um, Self does, Matt Mahaffey does, Matt does this thing, uh, like a lot of different, you know, really groovy, funky jams. I'm not trying to at all keep up with that stuff, right? Um, so what I did was just, uh, I laid out the whole thing from the guitar, and then we did like a filtered start, like with the drums thing. It'd be cool if the drums kind of came out of a sock. Okay, hey, so I just totally didn't tell you about the filter sweep in the first scene, so let me tell you about it. On the first scene, I just basically put that single guitar that I started from with the whole track, and uh, we affected it. You know, it's got a little wah thing happening on it. I think I talked about that. But you can hear that little wah jiggle. And the drums are, you know, filtered out. And as you just heard them come whooshed. So uh, what you want to do is watch this filter here in the middle. This is auto filter right out of Ableton. And what I did was basically you open up this guy, which is the MIDI track. And you can have MIDI view like there click this tab or click this tab where you get uh, some envelopes to choose from. And so we, uh, let's see, that's not the one we want. We want the one for, do, 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 auto filter, like brain fart. And so uh, simple enough, we just click to add a point, click to add a point, click to add a point. So it starts off, you know, a bit a bit down here, a bit closed off, a bit in the sock, and then it will, it will slowly, it will slowly bring itself out when we get to the end there. Here it comes. And uh, simple enough, that's the auto filter. Um, there's probably an easier way to like just automate your recording of it, but that's how I know how to do it. So, you know, click, 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 draw points, 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 and done back to the video and uh, banged into the thing. So when we kick it off, we kick off the first scene. So I use in, in practice this uh, Nectar Pacer foot pedal. So these two buttons get me up and down through the scenes. And so I'll put it on start, get ready, and hit this button to trigger things off. So you could see uh, that cursor just jumped from the top down one, and then so that's just me doing one press with my foot to move it, and another to kick it off. Um, and so that's how this go. It goes through the songs. I'm doing a little jam right there. Then we go into a verse. And then we've got. Uh, Oh yeah, so there's two things um, in this verse um, we do coming out of it just to add some some flavor and some excitement. Coming out of it, we do an airlift. So um, you really have to hit record on your long loop. Still do like an eight bar, an eight, eight bar loop, which is what all those kind of are for that section. And uh, you hit record, and sit there for a minute, and wait around until it, it finally comes, and then you. And it picks up the end of that verse section and hits you into the chorus where you then pick up with a big fat. A big boom kind of gets in there too, so you can hear. And this is probably full spectrum. Yeah, I let this go all the way to the bottom. 
um, which is kind of, you got to be careful a little bit like that. Like watch your, watch your volume. Where's my boom channel? Let's see what the actual, yeah, we're minus four and a half. Under zero, under, z under unity gain. So, um, you move through the things. Yeah, that's it. On this bridge, I actually leave this one. Um, pretty much all the music is out. I just started the bridge. And so the bridge has an airlift at the end, a little riser at the end too. And uh, I sing that part. And then uh, it was really actually, I got damn lucky in the performance that precedes this tutorial because I did not have my metronome turned on. And so I realized that when I got to this section and I went into this bridge, and this bridge is playing right now, and so I should be hearing the click track, the metronome, and I was hearing nothing. So I guess uh, self-brag, I guess, is what's going on there, because um, you can roll back, check that performance out. I'm pretty sure when we came out of this bridge, it was about on. It was maybe like a half second, like the loop was late which means I was a little bit fast as I went through it, but close enough that um, I still was able to get to the next section. Rock into the last chorus and make it work. Um, so I think that's everything. You know, we still have, uh, just like my other projects, everything goes through uh, the, the console model, which in this case is uh, the Trident ADB, I think is what it was. And uh, I can check. It's in my. It's in the Discord right here. Messages failed to load. <laughs> it's in the Discord. Oh, thanks, Discord. I guess I have no internet right now. What's up with that? Who knows? But yeah, I think it's a Trident ADB. So uh, that's the project. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll probably answer them for you. And uh, if you don't, cool. Go make some cool stuff. Cheers.